Hello again folks, um, in tonight's video I wanted to address a comment that was made on my laptop cooling assembly replacement video uh, which I uploaded a couple of days ago. Um, in that video I showed you how to change this out on a Toshiba P70 laptop and as part of the video I told you in layman's terms basically how a unit like this functions. Um, what I suggested was that this copper pipe is filled with a fluid, I think I said alcohol, um, it may or may not be alcohol but Essentially what happens is the um, CPU and GPU heat up the fluid inside this uh, copper pipe. It then sort of flows up uh, to the cooling area, if we want to call it that. Uh, you know, essentially this fan assembly here. And what happens is the, the air being blown across the, uh, the cooling vanes here, which are connected to this uh, pipe, the copper pipe, uh, it causes that vapour or steam to condense and then it flows back around the system and essentially that keeps happening and keeps your laptop nice and cool and functioning you know, in, you know at its optimum sort of operating temperature essentially that's ultimately what it's there to do uh, keep it as cool as it can be uh, thus making it more efficient but the comment that was made basically said that I was you know I was wrong uh, there's no fluid inside this it uses convection and all such like, um, you know, basically saying I was wrong. And for those of you who know me, uh, I appreciate most of you don't know me watching my videos, but um, those that do know me in person know that if I'm right, I will argue till I'm blue in the face. I am relentless. <laughs> um, if I know I'm right, yeah, I will not let it go. Um, I don't like being told I'm wrong, um, you know, but that said, I won't argue. If I know, if I have any sort of doubt that I might be wrong, I won't argue the fact. But um, yeah, so that's why I like feedback, I like comments, you know, if people think I've done something wrong, then by all means, you know, tell me. If people think, no, you're absolutely right, by all means, please tell me as well. So I thought what we'd do in this video uh, would be to basically cut this in half and see if indeed there was uh, a fluid inside. Um, and which, something which is quite unusual for me, I will talk through the science and will talk you through in not great detail, but, you know, fairly detailed uh, way how this actually works so yeah rambling on yet again um but we'll crack on and uh, see what's inside so before we start we need something to uh, contain any liquid if there is any liquid i think there is um so i'm just going to use my what do you call it soda and iron tip cleaner uh, just because it's metal and you know if it is an alcohol or, or we're not sure we might try and set it in fire and see what happens which might be exciting um but um the dremel's getting an outing today it doesn't often come out to play but it's out tonight um and we'll just go ahead and cut it in half so i've got my diamond uh, cut off wheel and yeah we'll just cut it in half and see what's inside Okay, slightly noisy, and there was definitely something came out there. Um, now there's not an obvious fluid in there, so um, that is not what I expected. I thought there would be obvious fluid that came out, but I am convinced that there is some type of fluid in here. So I'm just going to use a bit of uh, lint-free cloth, and then we'll just dab it on here and see if there's any comes out. And as you can see. There is indeed fluid in here. You can see those three marks uh, that I've just um, put on there, and that's the fluid um, transferring onto the paper using exactly the process I'm going to show you or talk through. So, if we look inside the end of this heat pipe, and it might be quite difficult to see because of the way it's been cut, um, but inside here is. Um, how would you describe it? Sintered material, so almost like a powdered uh, metal inside. And what that does is, is essentially form um, a kind of wick. So um, I think what I'll do actually is I'll pause the video before I go any further and I'm going to try and open this up to show you um, exactly what I mean uh, so that it makes maybe more sense. So bear with me one moment. 
Right folks, uh, sorry about that little pause there, um, but yeah, I've uh, done what I said I'm going to do, I have cut open um, a section of the heat pipe, and if I can get this, oops, hit the camera, if I can get this to focus, um, when I take this off, you will see that inside it is not a nice smooth piece of copper piping, but it is that sort of centred, almost a powdered uh, copper metal inside. Um, it is metal, if I scratch it, you should probably be able to see that it is uh, going shiny copper colour. Um, right, so how does this work? Um, so essentially what I did say was, was correct, but we'll get into it in a more scientific, uh, and scientific approach if you want. So we have a fluid in here. Uh, you saw that uh, wicking out onto the piece of cloth. Um, what happens in this scenario is in this sintered, almost porous metal here, we have a fluid, okay? And that is retained within that structure of the, the metal. Um, when the CPU, uh, this is a CPU, sorry, CPU clamp here, and the GPU heat up the um, liquid held within this uh, structure, it does indeed turn it into a vapour, okay? Now, with the temperature difference between the hot and cold end, that steam will naturally travel towards the um, towards the cooling end of the, the system or the, the unit um, by means of the um, the gap in between the, the actual pipe itself. Now I have opened this up to exaggerate it. So if you can imagine, you've got uh, liquid held within the structure here once it's heated up and turns it into steam, it then passes into this cavity here. Let's see, it travels up here to this end, it's cooled and condensed, and then goes into, uh, once it's condensed, travels back into the structure. Now, how does it get back down there? Well, it's quite simple. Who here, or who watching this, has ever used a kitchen towel to mop up something you've spilt in the kitchen? You know, it's really absorbent. You just set it down and you can actually see it being drawn in. Now, I'll do a little example of that here um, using, if we're not getting flammable uh, liquids out of this, we might as well use some other flammable liquids for a demonstration. Um, yeah, how does it work? It uses capillary action. It doesn't need gravity to help it um, or any uh, external force to, to move the fluid. It just flows by means of uh, capillary action. So, I've got a piece of lint-free cloth here. I'm going to put it in vertically into this um, methylated spirits here and just leave it for a moment. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to let it do its thing. And as you can probably see already, um, using nothing but capillary action, um, it's not as if the fluid's coming from top down. Um, if I stop it there, you will see... Get rid of that now. You will see that the fluid has travelled up this piece of lint-free cloth uh, you know, by itself. Gravity has not had an effect on it. Capillary action has drawn that fluid up the structure of this piece of cloth in exactly the same way as it draws the fluid using capillary action through the structure of this, uh, this heat pipe and this sintered copper material. So, I'm afraid for once, I am actually right. Um, that is how it works. Um, CPU uh, coolers that you get in a, a desktop may use a, a similar, uh, a similar type of you know um, process to to cool. But that is definitely how a, a laptop cooling system works. So, yeah, there we have it. And I'm just thinking. I wonder if it would be interesting to see if we hit that up with a blowtorch, whether it would actually turn back into shiny, you know, solid copper. Shall we try that? I think we shall. Bear with me. Okay, right. I have a sample of the copper heat pipe here. I have my blow lamp, blowtorch, whatever you want to call it. I have a lighter. Uh, let's see if this actually turns back into, um, you know, solid copper, essentially, if it melts and sort of flows into to proper uh, solid copper metal. Um, I should say, at this point, I have put my methylated spirits away. I've also put my isopropyl alcohol away. I did get into trouble 
from another co another commenter for leaving my isopropyl alcohol open during that video so it's not overall been a very successful video uh, that uh, heat sink replacement one but never mind uh, yeah let's get some fire in the go and get all manly <laughs> Well, it's not, um, it's not, you know, really turned into a solid copper metal. It has, um, if I scrape it, it does go shiny copper, as you can see, probably just about there. But yeah, I'm wondering if there's maybe some sort of anti-corrosive coatings impregnated into that, you know, copper sort of powdery material. Uh, because obviously if you've got really small areas of copper and a, a fluid there, it will sort of corrode and, uh, you know not oxidised, but you know, uh, yeah, corrode and basically start degrading to the point that I suppose the, the small amount of liquid that's actually inside it could leak out. But there we go, um, I'll get rid of that before I burn my fingers. Um, yeah, so like I say, a uh, little bit, not so much of a rant video, but just a, not even a, an I'm right, you're wrong. I just, you know, I just thought I'd explain it, hopefully, um, exactly how it works and hopefully that might aid your understanding if you've always wondered how it does indeed work. Um, right, so I suppose we'll make this into a competition time video. Uh, looking at subscriber numbers, I'm at just under 1150. So, next 100 subscribers, um, yeah, uh, I will do a little prize draw, send some electronic goodness out to one of you subscribers. Um, so, yeah, if you want to comment below, uh, what shall we get you to say in these comments? Um, either you're right, Chris, or you're wrong, Chris. I don't know, I don't mind which one it is, um, as long as, uh, well, if you're honest, that's the main thing. If, if you think I'm right in my explanation, how that works, then say, you're right, Chris. If you think I'm talking a lot of rubbish, say, you're wrong, Chris. Um, only one entry per person. You can comment as many times as you like. However, you will only get one uh, draw entry because the uh, website I used to, uh, check the entries will only show unique usernames it doesn't show the number of entries etc so rambling on again um, yeah thanks for watching if you found it interesting or enjoyable um, give me the thumbs up if you think I'm just a moaning get and you know let it go uh, give me the thumbs down if you've not already done so click on my fat head here and um, you might find an interesting video down here if you've not seen some of my other stuff um, so yeah Thanks for watching. As always, take care of yourselves and until next time, all the best.